always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again. Rejoice. Let us rejoice in the Lord. Let us rejoice in his word tonight. Greetings in the name of the Lord our Jesus Christ. You all can smile because the topic is joyful life. Maybe one another time, let's smile and get this started. We live in a world, we live in somewhat a sad world that knows despair, depression, gloom, dismay, unfulfillment, dissatisfaction, longing for things that never come to pass due to circumstances, personal, family, financial, all kinds of issues. It's a kind of sad reality with an even sadder future because we have a world of sadness with no hope that anything should necessarily change. The long years of life inevitably become long years of sorrow punctuated by moments of happiness here and there. Those moments become less and less as you age more. As the length of years and the decreasing moments of happiness bring about a gruesome sadness and lack of satisfaction with life. People talk about happiness. What is happiness? It is an at attitude of satisfaction or delight based upon some circumstances. Happiness is related to happenings. Happiness is related to the root word hap, which is a word basically it means idea of chance. Happiness is that which you really can't plan and program. It may happen, it may not happen. And it seems so elusive and difficult to find these days. But it is related to the delight or the satisfaction that is tied to an occasional happening, a chance based on circumstances. And that's the best men can do. On the other hand, when we talk about joy, we are not talking about something that's related to, the, to chance at all. We are not talking about something that's related to circumstances at all. We are talking about deep down confidence that all is well. We sang the song tonight. No matter what the circumstance, no matter what the difficulty, no matter what the problem is. And that's why it's very different from happiness. Colloquially, we may use both for the same meaning. But joy to be understood in biblical sense must be understood to be related to God. Joy becomes yours in Jesus Christ. It must be understood as a permanent possession of every believer, not some whimsical delight that comes and goes as a chance, as an opportunity. This is a quote or, or some unknown author statement. Joy is the flag that flies on the castle of the heart when the king is residence there. We, we can relate with our spiritual life when Jesus Christ is ruling over heart, your heart as a king. The outward appearance will be the joy as a flag. And I believe Christians can know true and lasting joy in New Testament, we see rejoice appears 74 times in the, and noun joy appears 59 times. So it needs to be part and parcel of Christian life, joyful life. It's supposed to be. First, joy comes from God. It is a gift of God. We are going to see a lot of Bible verses today. Hopefully you can note down. Psalm 4, 7, 8 says, Fill my heart with joy when their when grain and new wine abound. 
In peace I will lie down and sleep, for you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. Psalmist is saying, you give me gladness, you give me joy, because you alone make me dwell in safety. Psalm 1611, you will show me the path of life, in your presence is fullness of joy, at your right hand the pleasures forevermore. Pretty much it covers joyful life and the pleasures forevermore. God is the source of joy. Joy is a gift from God. It has to come from him. And also joy is a gift from God to those who believe the gospel. On the day, on the marvelous day in Galilean countryside when the angel appeared to announce the arrival of birth of Jesus to Mary, the angel said, Luke 2.10, do not be afraid, I bring you a good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Because today in the town of David, Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. So it is a gospel that brings that joy, conveys that joy to the human heart. And it is a gift from, gift from God, those who believe in the gospel, who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. John 15, 11. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. Christ came to proclaim a gospel that would give man joy. And also joy is a gift from God to those who believe the gospel being produced in them by the Holy Spirit. Romans 14, 17. For the kingdom of God is not the matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Galatians 5.22, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy. There are two parts which Silas preached on, specifically on joy. The first trio, what he called, in the middle we see the joy, fruit of the Spirit. So joy is a gift from God to those who believe, being produced in them by the Holy Spirit. Also, true joy is a gift from God that comes to those who believe in gospel, being produced in them by the Holy Spirit, as the believer receives and obeys the word. You see that sentence is getting bigger and bigger. Jeremiah 15, 16, that's why. When your words came, I ate them. They were my joy and my heart's delight. I ate them. They were my heart's delight and my joy. For I bear your name, Lord God Almighty. And also on the road to Emmaus, we see the story. And when Jesus revealed to them, and you know, the disciples with Jesus said to themselves, did not our hearts burn within us? That's an expression of joy. When we taught him out of the scripture. 1 John 1 4 says, These things we write to you that your joy may be full. When you receive this word and apply this word, you experience full joy. So, a lot of things on joy. Let's have a joyful attitude. We are going to see two characters today. Now, I've been teaching a kind of character study this time. I'm shifting it a little bit because God prompted me to share this word today with you all. But still, it involves a couple of characters we will see. And before we get that started, let us bow down and pray that God will reveal to us. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for this wonderful day that you brought us together. Lord, as we saw earlier during the communion Sunday time, communion time when we were participating in the table, Lord, we saw that you opened their eyes. Their eyes were open. Help us tonight. You open our eyes 
open our ears. Whatever you have in store for us today, teach us. Teach us, Lord. Teach your word. Let us eat your word, Lord, that we will have full joy. And our hearts will be delighted tonight when we leave. Help us to do, do that tonight, I ask in Jesus' name. Joyful man and sorrowful man. There are two characters. We are going to see the sorrowful man today. You already saw a little bit of the glimpse when, when the scripture reading was done earlier. Let's go back to centuries ago, Psalm 22. There is a man in distress, a man in, in depression, man who knew he ought to have joy, but he couldn't seem to grasp it. No, some suggest that uh, Psalm 42 and 43, possibly written by David, but we don't know. But the Psalms, these two Psalms are attributed to sons of Korah. Maybe they took the Psalm and, 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 and he, he kind of attributed to him. Maybe they might have sung. We don't know. What we know is that whoever wrote that Psalm was a depressed person at the same time knowing that that was not the right way to be. He couldn't seem to crawl out of the pit he was in. He introduced us to the, his depression in the first four verses of Psalm 42. Psalm 42, 1. As the deer longs for streams of water, so I long for you, O God. I thirst for God, the living God, when I go and stand before him. Day and night... I have only tears for food, while my enemies continually taunt me, saying, where is this God of yours? My heart is breaking as I remember how it used to be. I walked among the crowds of worshipers, leading a great procession to the house of God, singing for joy and giving thanks amid the, amid the sound of great celebration. Now, there is a picture of sorrow, sadness, loneliness, separation. It all adds up to a depressed state, a state of despair. We see that unsatisfied longing for God. In writing this, Psalmist somehow feels that he's cut off from God. Like a thirsty deer pants for the water brook, his soul pants for God, his soul thirsts for God, for the living God. The sense of loneliness, sense of alienation, he has an intense desire to be near God. He has an intense desire for God to come and deliver him from his present state. And so he's dealing with the unsatisfied longing for God. He feels alone. He feels as if God has abandoned him. God is not around. He wonders how long he will have to wait before God finally shows up in his life. It's a pretty universal way to define people's sadness, depression, when they are separated from God. He's feeling or he's dealing with this depression, mainly intensified by his enemies. There he's in verse 3. Day and night I have only tears for food. Tears for food. If you look deeper into this, tears coming on his from eyes, it goes all the way to his lips. It goes inside in his mouth. Kind of very poetical way to express that. Tears for food. How many times, maybe at some point, we might have faced in our lives. In this case, his enemies were taunting him, where is your God? And his enemies are taunting, like as adding salt on his wound. Maybe he's thinking he's not worthy of God's attention. And another thing is that compels his sadness is he remembers his privileges last. If you, if you see the verse, uh, My heart is breaking as I remember how it used to be. 
I walked among the crowds of worshippers leading a great procession to the house of God, singing for joy, giving thanks amid the sound of great celebration. He was out of Jerusalem and away from the city, away from the people, and there was not any time to worship and fellowship to be in a festival, to enjoy what he once, he once enjoyed so greatly. So his problem is, his sadness is coming out of his circumstances. He's alone. You can go to that slide. He's, go to the slide. What the struggle we see is, he's discouraged, and he's feeling very sad in his heart. He's alone. He's being reproached by his enemies, and he's dislocated from his people and his land and in the situation he's, he's very sad. He is depressed. The thing is how he reacts to his depression. How he reacts to his depression. Five and seven. Why I am discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? He's asking to himself. I will put my hope in God. I will praise him on my Praise him again, my Savior, and my God, my God. Now I am deeply discouraged, but I will remember you. Deep calls to deep in the roar of your water, waterfalls. All your waves and breakers have swept over me. My God, my God. Why are you doing this? He, he, he mentions it. I will put my hope in God. He knows God. He, he says... No, I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again. Then immediately in the verse 6, immediately he goes back. Now I am deeply discouraged. I will remember you. He's going back and forth. Don't we feel at some times? Glimpse of hope, then immediately going back to sadness. Very wonderful way of uh, saying it. Deep calls to deep. That means sorrow over sorrow. Have you ever had such a process in your life? Such an interrogation of your own soul? Some kind of uh, situation or circumstances which you went through? You started complaining, moaning, and feeling alienated from God? feeling attacked by the people of, uh, you know, people around you. It might happen everywhere, family, offices, churches. Have you felt you have been cut off from the pleasures, the privileges which you had before? At the same time, he's saying, hope in God, a time of praise will come, his help will come, his presence will come, all those things are there. My God, my God, now I am deeply discouraged. Deep calls to deep means blow follows blow. Sometimes we say life is like that. One after another, like cascading waterfall, never able to come out. Verse 8, then he says, by day... The Lord directs his love. At night, his song is with me. A prayer to the God, my life. I say to my God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? My bones suffer mortal agony as my foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, where is your God? Then once again, he's right back into depression again. Then he asked himself the same question in verse 11. Verse 11. Why am I discouraged? What is my heart? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. He goes right back to depression. Why are you doing? Why are you doing? I think we sh it could have been enough if he ended it there. Psalm 43, once again. And go to the next slide. It starts, Psalms 43 starts like that. Declare me innocent. Vindicate me, Lord. Defend me against those ungodly people. Rescue me from those unjust liars. 
send out your light and your truth. Let them guide me. Let them lead me to your holy mountain. He's back into the same cycle of depression again and again. And verse 4, you see it there. See here, in spite of all these things, we, there I will go to the altar of God, to God, the source of all my joy. He's coming back to believe in God. It will, I will praise you with my heart. Oh God, my God. Once again, goes back to in verse 5. Why am, I, why am I disgraced? Why is my heart so sad? Will, will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. Here is a man who knows that his joy is found in his God, but he can't seem to get himself from his circumstances to his God. Self-interrogation. Self-interrogation, going back and forth, struggling with that. Listen to me carefully, this statement, right? Where is my faith? Even deep down, right in there, even, even deep down, right in there is nothing but emptiness and darkness. If there be God, please forgive me. I'll read it again. Where is my faith? Even deep down, right in there, there is nothing but emptiness and darkness. If there be God, please forgive me. If I tell you the author of this statement, you'll be surprised. Some of you might have known. It is Mother Teresa. She said, even deep down right in there is nothing but emptiness and darkness. If there be God, please forgive me. The beloved and renowned as a tireless servant of God, serving the poor and lepers in Calcutta. She herself waged a desperate war for her faith because it this was published after, after her death in a book. It's one of the journal from her, from her one of her one of one of one of her journals. It was published in the book "Come Be My Light." Now shifting gear, let's see another person, which I said, joyful man. That is Paul. That is Paul. Paul's approach and his experience and his outcome is different. One or two. You know the circumstances he wrote Philippians? In Philippians, Paul mentions it at least 16 times about joy in these four chapters. And also he mentions Christ 50 times because the joy is found in Christ. He was in a situation quite like psalmist. He was lonely and Timothy was his only helper. He knew his heart. It says in chapter 2, verse 20, he was going to send away so he would be really alone when Timothy left. Then there was another helper coming. If for it, if for, if for it is, who had brought him a gift from Philippines and who prompted this letter was going to go, he is also going back. Also, you know, he got sick. And uh, during the time, Paul will mention the same situation, sorrow over sorrow. Similar to like a deep calling deep. He could have been in the same situation. God, are you there? Why? He might have been discouraged and he might have been moaning and groaning. It is not there. He doesn't look at his circumstances. He missed all those things. He missed the Lord's table what the psalmist was talking about, the fellowship, the celebration, worship. He was, Paul was mercilessly criticized by his enemies also, right? Not only his enemies in the pagan culture, but also from the church circle. He was right where the psalmist was. Difference was the psalmist was struggling with his circumstances and Paul was rejoicing in the Lord. And that is the work of Holy Spirit. Galatians 5 says, I read already, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy. Romans 14, 17 says that we have in the kingdom righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit was in him. So we are going back. 
So joy is a gift from God to those who believe that gospel of Christ being produced in them by the Holy Spirit because they receive and obey the word of God mixed with trials and keep their focus on eternal glory. For a joyful Christian life, it is not related to circumstances. It is a gift of God. So if we have one man focusing on circumstances and having to do multiple things, groaning, he knows better. He knows about the Lord. He knows about uh, all the things about joy, but he can't seem to pull himself out of it. And we see Paul, who is He's literally gushing joy because he has lost sight of his circumstances. I want to read a few verses. Philippians 1, 3, 4, 5, 6. We are going to gather four points very quickly. Philippians 1, 3, 4, 5, and 6. 1. I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy. Because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Four things. One is, we see very obviously the joy of recollection or joy of appreciation. He's in the prison, he's in the dungeon, Roman prison going through pain. In spite of all this joy of appreciation, verse 3, I thank my God every time I remember you. Do we remember the best of our people? Do we appreciate? Not alone during the time of going through suffering, but quite ordinary time. Those who serve the Lord. Do you appreciate our sound booth guys? Appreciate our musicians? Appreciate the preachers? All those who do God's work, Paul remembers them. I thank my God every time I remember you. Now number two, joy of intercession. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy. Whenever he thinks of them, he prays for them, he intercedes for them. Do we have that intercession in our lives? Especially in whatever the issues which you are dealing with, whether personal or official or church life, intercession for the country, intercession for your boss, intercession for anything. Do you intercede? And do you have, he says, in all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy. He was in prison. Joy of intercession. Praying for others. I think as Samuel mentioned, pray for the, pray the whole week. Do we take note of prayer points for our own fellow believers? It's, I'm questioning myself when I say this. Because sometimes I take note, sometimes I don't. Joy of intercession. It is a privilege to petition on behalf of, of others because that is joy. Joy spends its energies on others, not its not self. Third one is joy of participation. He says, because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, Philippian Church of Philippians partnered with Paul in spreading the gospel. He says, I read it right, thank God with joy in view of your participation. Participation, no, it is not only just the ministry, participation is the fellowship. Do you take delight in participation, participating in the fellowship? Taking time to commune with the fellow believers. Sometimes we, no, we, maybe we don't like uh, you know, few others, so I don't join fellowship, things like that, or we have only negative things to say about it. I think um, I, I, I read a few things like when you go to heaven, 
this kind of attitude, how, how will these negative people will live in heaven, even though they are believers, they will get there. They'll be looking for negative things which they can't find, and it will frustrate them in heaven. I don't know what it is, but think it through. Joy of participation. Do we, let us do our own inventory of our own lives. Do we have a true joy as a believer? We should be excited about our fellowship. Fourth point, the joy of anticipation. Verse 6, right? Being confident of this, that we, he who began a good work in you will carry it on unto completion, carry, carry it on to completion until the day of Christ. So that we have the future. Anticipation of the great glory. That is an anticipation. Now, I wanted to read the same verse. Let's put Indian fellowship there. When Paul reads it, Paul writes it. I thank my God every time for Indian fellowship. I thank my God every time I remember the Indian fellowship. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy. Do we pray with joy? Third one, because of Indian fellowships, partnership in the gospel from the days until now. Being confident of this, that, the, that he who began a good work in Indian fellowship, do we have that confidence? Good work in us will carry it on to the, God will take care of, carry it on to the completion until the day of Christ. What God began, or what God begins, he completes it. God who saved you by his power will keep you by his power. That's an anticipation. Now, it's our choice. We can take, we can moan and groan and mumble around about, you know, how to get out of this situation. Like, the psalmist, why I am discouraged, why is my heart so sad and everything. Or, all these four things I talked about, do we have that characteristics? Appreciation, participation, intercession, and anticipation. These just four verses which will speak to us. Now, James 1, 2. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. We will go through trials. We should consider it a pure joy. Now Jude 24. Now all glory to God who is able to keep you from falling away and will bring you with great joy into his glorious presence without a single fault. He will take us. That's an anticipation, right? The important thing is you will never experience the reality of true joy unless it is made very clear by contrast to trials. That's why the contrast, you can see the sorrowful man and the joyful man. It is in a real sense, it is true contrast. 1 Thessalonians 1.6 You became imitators of us and of the Lord for you welcomed the message in the midst of severe suffering with joy given by the Holy Spirit. That sums it all. Holy Spirit Tribulation, that's where the joys, joys. All the things which I put together, all the things we listened, you know, do you all have a favorite Bible verse, right? You all, you know, some, something will be in you know, one or two or more. This is the one verse which contains all the things which I talked so far, which you can use it in your life, it's very practical. Let's show that Romans 12, 12. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. All the things we talked about, pretty much condensed in this one verse. So there are so many things in this one particular verse. You now some people, they are, you know, they are kind of like, you know, dry bone, right? Like you know, Ezekiel mentions, right? Dead life. Because of the things they face. 
no tears rolling over tears. Those things will not help us to do good works. Paul kind, Paul kind is different, but he is joyful, steadfast in doing good. You see, steadfast in doing good. They may go through the same kind of hardship. The difference is based on this particular verse, 12, 12. Joyful in hope, joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. This one verse very dear to me. Pretty much this is like a symbol for me. Whatever the situation you go through, whether at work, at over a phone call with my family or, or anything. Some situation. How, how do I deal with this? How do I do, deal with this? Always there is a hope. You can show your joy. You can feel your joy. And also God will remind you, be patient, be patient, be patient. And take it to him. Kneel down. Go to your closet. Faithful in prayer. And very, very quickly, I think the next one is specifically on joyful in hope. Because our hope is in Christ's promises. Hope is the anchor for our soul. Because Hebrews 6.19, this hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor for our soul. The source of joy is because of assurance of salvation. Then we have the anticipation, God's eternal promises. As a matter of fact, all these four I mentioned, appreciation, participation, intercession, and anticipation. Then practical application from this, cultivating joy through daily gratitude. Daily gratitude. It will work everywhere, anywhere. Encouraging one another with the hope that we have in Christ. Encourage. We have the hope. I think I wanted to read very, you know, so many verses. I wanted to do it quickly. We can note down if you could. Because we have the hope, we have the promises from the Lord. Let me read it very quickly, then take it from there. Because God knows everything about you, Psalm 139.1. I know when you sit down and when you rise up, Psalm 139.2. I am familiar with all your ways, Psalm 139.3. Even the very hairs of your head are numbered, Matthew 10.29-31. For you were made in my image, Genesis 1.27. In me you live and move and I have your being, Acts 17.28. I chose you when I planned a creation, Ephesians 1, 11 and 2, 11 and 12. I knew you even before you were conceived, Jeremiah 14.5. You are fearfully and wonderfully made, Psalm 139 and 14. I knit you together in your mother's womb, Psalm 139 and 13, and brought you forth on the day you were born, Psalm 71.6. If you were, you were not a mistake, for all your days were written in my book, Psalm 139 and 15, 16. I am not a distant and angry, but I am complete expression of love, 1 John 4, 16. And it is my desire to lavish my love on you, 1 John 3, 1. Simply because you are my child and I am your father, Matthew 7, 11. For I am the perfect father, Matthew 5, 48. Every good gift that you receive comes from my hand, James, James 1, 17. For I am your provider and meet all your needs, Matthew 6, 31, 13. 6, 31 to 33. My plan for your future has always been filled with hope, Jeremiah 29, 11. Because I love you with my everlasting love, Jeremiah 31, 3. My thoughts toward you are countless as the sand on seashore, Psalms 139, 17, 18. And I rejoice over you with singing, Zephaniah 3, 17. I will never stop doing good for you, Jeremiah 30 to 40. For you are my treasured possession, Exodus 19, 5. I desire to establish you with all my heart and with all my soul, Jeremiah 30 to 41. And I want to show you great and marvelous things, Jeremiah 33, 3. If you seek me with all your heart, you will find me, Deuteronomy 4, 29. Delight in me, and I will give you the desires of your heart, Psalm 37, 4. For it is I who gave you those desires, Philippians 2, 13. I am able to do more for you than you could possibly imagine, Ephesians 3, 20. For I am your greatest encourager, 2 Thessalonians 2, 16, 17. Do we need more? Do we need more to have hope in him? Shouldn't we be joyful with all these things? We may go through 
lot of things, affliction. The next slide, I will go through a couple of them very quick. Patient in affliction. Understanding patience in affliction. John 16, 33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. You will have trouble. It is not everything rosy, joy, full life. You will go through troubles. In spite of that, God is encouraging to have that endurance as a testament for our faith. The example of Christ, Christ's patience during his earthly ministry. We observe the Isaiah 53 gives a very wonderful picture, if you, you know, like a lamb to be slaughtered. He was silent. Patience is in suffering. Practical application for us, trusting God's timing, supporting one another, one another through difficulties. Faithful in prayer. The power of prayer, communicate. Yeah, next slide is faithful in prayer. You can see the power of prayer, communicating with the Creator. I think we saw, we saw about the you know the intercession, right? Accessing the throne of grace, we have the wonderful opportunity with the Father. We have God's throne of grace. We can reach with confidence to Him. Consistent in prayer, developing a habit of prayer. All kinds of prayer. There's, you know, there's no time to talk about those things in detail, but you know it. Practical application. Establishing a personal and communal prayer in life. Seeking God's guidance and strength through prayer. Faithful in prayer. Next slide. Because joy is the serious business of heaven. It is a serious business of heaven, business of heaven. It is not a you know, superficial thing. It is not a fleeting emotion, but rather a fundamental aspect of our existence with the spiritual significance because it's a kingdom business. C.S. Lewis, there is a separate book, and you know, it's called Surprised by Joy, in, in which he mentions, I doubt whether anyone who has tasted it would ever, if both were in his power, exchange it for all the pleasures in the world. You can't exchange it for all the pleasures in the world, the joy which is given by the Lord. How is your joy? How is my joy? How is the joy in your heart today? Where do you, where do you want to begin? It's all produced by Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. We begin with dealing with the sin in our life Confessing it to the Lord, yielding to the Spirit of God, and letting the Spirit produce the joy. Just remember the fact that we were chosen by God to salvation before the foundation of the world. The fact that we have been given such a glorious life in Christ. The fact that we have been placed in this church alongside these people. The fact that you have been given the privilege of Intercessory prayer and access to God's throne at any time. What a privilege. The fact that God has filled our life with so much blessedness should cause you to constantly filled with what? Filled with what? Joy. Let's not blame the circumstances. Let's take the issue where the issue really belongs. It belongs inside. If you are not a believer, it is very important. Believe in the Lord Jesus. The very first thing we mentioned it there, right? You need Jesus. Surrender to him. It should be accompanied by repentance, confession of your sin, and commitment to follow Christ. Romans 12, 12, then we saw it earlier. They want to read one more verse, Psalm 68, 3. After that, we'll pray. Psalm 68, 3. But may the righteous be glad and rejoice, rejoice before God. May they be happy and joyful. Happy and joyful. That God 
Let the Lord work in our heart through the Holy Spirit. Yield to the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Bow down in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this your word. Your lot of verses we saw. Hope it will work in our heart. Let us understand and do the things in our lives as we, you taught us. Appreciation, intercession. Help us, Lord. Come to you in prayer. Participation. Help us, Lord, to participate with the fellow, fellow believers. In, help us to invest in them. Also the anticipation. The day we will be presented in front of the glorious throne of grace. We will anticipate because you are the Lord. We are your followers. Work in our heart, Lord, in the coming days. We will live a life, life full of joy. I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Benediction, Jude 20, uh, Romans 15, 13, you see here. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and, pay, and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit.